Hey guys, long time no see. As many of you know, I'm already on a trip in Islamabad, really having fun here. Just one quick video that I'd like to share, which has been requested, are my top Figma shortcuts. And these may not necessarily encompass all of the shortcuts that I have, but these are going to be some of the used ones that I probably use throughout the day. So let's probably cover like 10 or maybe even less. So the first shortcut that I want you to be aware of is really simple, but again, like I'm gonna start with simple and then we can go advanced, is the zooming one. So even though everyone knows how, like most people know how to zoom, they don't really know how to do it properly. So the first thing that you need to know is you can zoom by pressing Z. So if you have pressed, uh, so you, if you have the, the Z key pressed, you can basically click on anything to zoom on it. And then if, for example, you wanna zoom out, you can use the Option key or the Alt key on Mac. And by pressing the Z and the Option key together, you can actually zoom out. So that's one thing. The other thing is if you press Shift 1, Shift 1 is actually gonna show you uh, it's going to zoom to fit and it's going to show you all of the all of the layers that you have available or all of the frames that you have available in that particular file so as an example if i had if i placed a rectangle here and then pressed shift one uh, the artboard is going to zoom to fit which is going to basically let me see everything that's there so that's really important another thing that's important is uh, shift two if you press shift two while selecting a particular object for example if i just select this particular fill and then press shift 2 it's going to specifically focus that particular thing so that's really important one other thing that's important is using the key command 0 so command 0 is going to zoom to a hundred percent and that's really important too so those are the few things that i want you to remember about zooming the other thing that i'd like to like to tell you about are the panning tools which are going to be the space tva so uh, panning can actually be done by pressing the space key. If you have the space key pressed, you can basically click on the screen and then move left to right to actually move things around. If you have a magic mouse or something that actually allows horizontal and vertical scrolling both, then you can basically scroll like this. So I'm moving my magic mouse left and right and that does the panning or you can do it on, on the touchpad as well. But if you don't have that, you can, you can use the space key and then you can basically drag things around. Even though I have a magic mouse, I usually use the panning tool, which is the space tool to actually move things around. The other thing you need to know about is, for example, if you wanna create a text layer, you just press T and then you type it out. If you wanna go from let's say the artboard tool to any other tool. So the artboard tool or the frame tool is actually selected by the A key and you can create frames with that. And as you know, like I'm a strong proponent of using the artboard or the frame tool to group elements instead of the group thing, which is why I'm not even gonna cover how to group things in this particular video using the command. So for example, if I actually have, here, have these two items here, so you can actually group them by pressing command G, but I'm strongly going to recommend not to group things by pressing command G instead use command option G command option G as you can see on the left is going to group elements into a frame so those are a few things that you need to know about the V tool basically selects the move tool which uh, is selected by default and then let me just add the K tool as well so if you want to scale elements you can also press the K key and then if you scale an element it's going to scale proportionately and if for example if you have pressed V then obviously it's not going to be proportional so those are a few things that I want you to know about uh, with regards to panning and some of the tools that are available at the top. Some other things which are pretty common but a lot of people don't use them are the sizing and spacing adjustments. So for example, if I have a rectangle here, let me just give it a light color. And if I, let's say, wanted to move this uh, to the left or the right, I'm not gonna go ahead and do this by dragging it. You never, you usually never drag elements if you want to reposition them especially at shorter distances what you do is you either use the left and right arrow key so if you see on the top in this x column here or this x vertical you can see that if i'm using the left and right it's moving left and right one by one if i use up and down key it's actually changing the y position now if i want to move these in increments of let's say 8 or 10 or whatever i decide i can actually press the shift key and then move it around using the left and right or the top and bottom arrow keys and it's basically going to move it 8 pixels another thing if you actually do the same thing like press shift and use the arrow keys but also have command pressed then instead of it moving its position it's actually going to increase the width so as you can see the width is actually increasing and let me just make the box 
really small so we can see that difference so here we have a small box and if i press command shift and then arrow keys so i'm using the right arrow key it's increasing the width if i use the left arrow key it's going to decrease the width if i use the up arrow key it's going to re reduce the height and if i use the down arrow key it's going to increase the height so those are a few things that you need to know about the sizing and spacing adjustments the fourth thing i'd like to i'd like to let you know about are the layers assets and the library panel so by default you have the layers here and if you want to go to your assets instead of pressing the assets here and then pressing the layers here you basically should use the option one key to choose the layers option two key to choose the assets and option three key to actually see all the libraries or maybe even updates so on and so forth so these are the three keys that you need to remember here option or maybe if you're on windows alt one two and three option plus one comment slash two three so those are the things that you need to know about if you want to navigate through these things option one back to layers the fifth thing that you need to know about is copy pasting styles and replacing elements so if for example i have a box here and i'm going to create a smaller box here i'm going to give this box a black color or a fill now if i want this particular box to have the same styling i can basically just go ahead to this box and press you can press command option c and then go to this particular box and press command V. Command option C is gonna basically copy the styles of this box and command V is gonna paste them here. If you basically do command C and then go here and press command V, it's gonna basically copy this rectangle. But if you do command option C, it's gonna note that you're basically copying the styles. And then when you go to paste something, it should basically respect that and just paste the styles, not the object. So that's really important. If, for example, you wanted to replace this object with this object, you can basically press Command C and then you can go to whatever object you want to replace the previously selected object with and basically just go here and say paste to replace, which is Command Shift Option V, Command Shift Option V, and that's basically going to replace it. So those are a few things that you need to know about basically when copy pasting styles and replacing items. One thing that I just want you to know is copy pasting styles is very frequent. So even if you even if you don't remember the replace shortcut, like I personally don't, as you just saw, but if you really want to focus on one specific element here, focus on copy pasting styles, which is command option C, and then basically just going to a different element and pressing command V. So that's the style I want you to focus on. One other thing, auto layout. So if you, for example, have an auto layout, I'm just basically going to create, this is going to be my button title. If I want to basically have an auto layout container around it, I can just press shift A. I don't have to go to any of the auto layout panel. As you can see, I don't even have an auto layout panel because this is a text layer and a text layer and an auto layout cannot be applied on a text layer. So by default, if I press shift A, it's going to add a frame around it and it's going to make it an auto layout. A few other things that you need to know about in terms of resizing elements. So if, for example, um, I'm just going to go ahead and resize this particular button, I'm going to give it a background. So let's just give it a background like this. So we have a background. And now, for example, if I want to make it hug, co hug content, I can go here and I can say hug contents, but I can instead also use these arrows and it's going to basically make it hug content. If I press it again, it's going to make it fixed width. If I press this again, it's going to make it fixed height. These are specifically important if elements are sitting within in an auto layout. So I'm going to make this an auto layout. So this larger container is an auto layout as well. And then this button inside is also an auto layout. So I can have hug contents by default. But if an element is actually sitting inside of an auto layout, I can also make it fill container. So as you can see, we have some arrows here. And if I basically click them, um, this, in, this auto layout that's inside of the larger auto layout can actually take the whole space. Similarly, I can do it, uh, the fill container here as well on the vertical axis, and it's gonna basically occupy the whole space. It's not occupying this left and right space, primarily because there's padding applied on the left and the right and the top and the bottom. So those are a few things that I also want you to know about. Some minor things here is how to lock, lock and hide things. So for example, if I just wanna go and lock this particular text layer, I can press Command Shift L. That's going to lock it. Command Shift L again is going to unlock it. Similarly, if I wanted to hide it, Command Shift H is going to hide it and Command Shift H is going to unhide it. So those, those are a few things that you need to focus on. Creating components. Now components obviously are one of the major superpowers of Figma. If you want to go ahead and create a component, you just have to rename it to whatever it is that you want. So I'm going to say this is going to be our component one. 
and this is going to be our component 2. So I can go ahead and create a component by pressing the command option K key. I can also go here and press the command option K and as you can see we have both of our components created. Now one important point is perhaps you have let's say 50 different icons or 50 different elements that you need to create. You need to make components of them immediately. Now if I go ahead and select both of them and press command option K key as you can see a frame was added on top and both of these inner elements or inner components that I wanted to be wanted to act as components have actually been rendered as children of a larger component. So I still have just one component and both of those rectangles are elements inside of it not components. If I wanted to make let's say 50 or 100 or 1500 items components automatically I basically have to select them press the command P key and then basically say create multiple components and once I do that as you can see now both of them have been created or made into components so that's important. I also just basically demoed this but if you have forgotten a command or anything along those lines just press the command P key and this is going to allow you to basically go and search for things. So for example I want to search for a plugin maybe the lorem ipsum plugin I can basically uh, start start typing things and it's going to appear I can press enter and it's going to open the plugin basically similarly if I wanted to copy the styles I can say style and then obviously I have a bunch of different elements if I wanted to copy the element as SVG PNG CSS like I basically have a lot of things not all shortcuts are going to appear similarly particular object I can say command copy properties now as you can see it also shows you the shortcut so this is also one great way of relearning some of the things that I've been saying here and just adopting that a few other things that I want you to know is the scale thing so I currently have a plugin installed which is the scale plugin as you can see here and I've basically set a, um, set a shortcut manually for this for command shift s and you can do that in your Mac settings by going to Mac uh, keyboard and then let's say um, the shortcuts and basically go to uh, the app shortcuts and basically go to the and create the plus button select the application that you want choose the menu title the menu title basically has to match exactly what it says on any of these items so here it says scale so I'm just going to add scale here and I'm going to give it a shortcut so since I've already done that as you can see the scale thing actually has the command shift s and you can see some of the other items here as well. <clears throat> some of the other manual shortcuts that I've actually set as well if you want to use them. So here basically now I press command shift S and it basically asks me what width would you want this element to be. So I'm going to say 320 and it's automatically going to scale it to 320. It's not going to, it's not going to again manually resize it. It's going to scale it proportionately. So those are a few things that I wanted to wanted you to keep at the back of your head and which is which are hopefully going to speed your process probably quite a lot of time. So that's going to be it for this video. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.